Okay, on this video, I'm going to list what I think are the greatest classic post-apocalyptic comic series and characters of all time. Now, most of them came out in the 70s because that, that was just basically the best time for comic books. Um, and it was the time when post-apocalyptic uh, stories were big thanks to Planet of the Apes. The first, uh, first series I want to talk about came from Jack Kirby. It was, it's, it's one of my favorites, Commandy. It's uh, basically a lot like the Planet of the Apes. You got talking animals, uh, but instead of just apes, there's dogs and cats and tigers and all kinds of animals who walk around like human beings and and are intelligent. Uh, this was uh, published by DC Comics between 1972 and 1978. Features a young hero who is a hero and uh, is a human. Um, in this post-apocalyptic world, it's hard to say post-apocalyptic five. Like if you say it five times, it gets. Anyway, <clears throat> in this world, humans are reduced to savages, and they are ru ruled basically by animals. And all this is due to what Jack Kirby called the Great Disaster. In this story, a small number of humans have survived in uh, underground bunkers, while humans on the surface have become savages. You know, just like in Planet of the Apes, the humans were unable to talk and, and so forth, and that was kind of, kind of the thing. Now, it's unclear what the Great Disaster was. Um, Jack Kirby's assistant, Steve Sherman, according to Wikipedia, said that it wasn't a nuclear war. Even though a lot of uh, talk about radiation is uh, mentioned in the story. Now, the... Uh, the reason why the animals were said to become intelligent man-like beings was due to a drug called Cortexin, which was uh, created before the Great Disaster, and the scientist who created it dumped the drug into a stream near a, uh, a zoo. Now, like I said, Commandy is the last survivor of this human outpost in the called the uh, Commandy Bunker. And it was near what uh, was once New York City. Now, just like the Planet of the Apes, Commandy starts out uh, in the first book with a, a scene of the Statue of Liberty and New York City. Except in this, it's a lot more epic looking. You see the Statue of Liberty sticking out of the water. You see buildings falling down everywhere. It would have probably been beyond the scope of the 1970s movie to... To replicate this kind of thing so Jack Kirby though he had a lot of uh, big epic looking images that he could just create you know using R that back then they couldn't replicate uh, replicate <laughs> they couldn't duplicate on the movie screen anyway uh, late, uh, later Commandy actually befriends uh, intelligent mutant humans and, and he starts out to explore and have all kinds of adventures in this crazy brave new world um, now, having read the entire Commandy series and the uh, the DC series Hex, uh, it's unclear to me if the series are connected. Uh, I, I'm thinking that Commandy is just a possible future in the DC universe. Uh, according to the Commandy story, there are legends that Superman had failed to save the world from the Great Disaster, and his costume is later found and and worshipped by characters in the Commandy world. There was also a Superman story in the 70s that showed a human being in the future wearing Superman's costume. Now, a, um, in the 90s, they came out with a miniseries, a uh, Commandy miniseries, that uh, showed an elderly, white-bearded Superman teaming up with Kim Commandy. And then uh, later on, about like 1995, there was an Elseworld story, Superman at Earth's End, that followed up with Superman actually dying in Commandy's world. Now, Commandy's also teamed up with Batman in, in the Brave and the Bold comic series, and uh, those are good. And uh, if you've ever seen the Brave and the Bold cartoon series, he shows up on that as well, which is very a very good series, very good cartoon series. I'd highly recommend picking that up on Blu-ray. Now, uh, speaking of Hex, Hex was a very interesting take on a post-apocalyptic uh, on the post-apocalyptic genre. It featured an already existing character from DC Comics, a Western hero named jo Jonah Hex. Now he ends up in a post-apocalyptic future 
that I believe happens in a DC timeline before the Legion of Superheroes. Some sort of nuclear war or something had happened, destroyed the world, blah blah blah, and then later on, humans progress again. Now, the, the, the cool thing about Hex was Jonah Hex had already had a good series in the 70s and 80s, and then it just great stories in a western environment and then they switched into this post-apocalyptic future and the series didn't last very long it was uh, published between 85 and 87 I don't think it was as good as the western series actually to be honest but it was it was interesting and I like it especially the first few ish issues <clears throat> and then to me the big draw for the the book Hex is basically Jonah Hex himself taking a, a character who's normally in the West and putting him in a, a totally different background such as the apocalypse. I mean that just that, to me that's just interesting. <clears throat> and uh, now, to me Jonah Hex always reminded me of Clint Eastwood Westerns and th there was even talk about Clint Eastwood doing a hex a jonah hex movie in the 80s which would have been great it had been an awesome movie and it, i mean whenever you read the old jonah hex books you can't help but feel like you know clint eastwood is actually who they're uh, portraying um i think it's best that we totally forget the jonah hex movie we actually got a few years ago because that was just a bunch of jumbled up mess a total that was, that was a big letdown. That, that movie didn't even make any sense. Um, and it seems like, and if you, as far as the comic series goes, Jonah Hex as a character, he's not really ever been represented as well as he was back in the 70s and 80s, early 80s. The, uh, some of the newer series that came out, he was, he was just too savage, and uh, they seemed to forget the humanity of Jonah Hex. He was just, a, he was just tough this killer kind of guy without any real humanity the, the, the heroic part of him seemed to be missing and that that that's that's what made him interesting that a hero he could still be a hero still be human and and be able to do resort to such savage tactics sometimes just to survive you feel like he really it was the world that forced him to to uh, be as violent as he was but if he if if he got the chance, he always felt like he would settle down. And he actually did settle down in a few uh, few books towards the end. He got married, and, and but of course that that honestly, I don't think that was as popular as uh, as they wanted it to be. And he uh, eventually got back on the trail and um, killing and bounty hunting, and et cetera, et cetera. But that Jonah Hex and and Hex are, are very good books. I, I recommend you. Try to pick those up if you can. Now, the next, uh, next character is Deathlock. Now, in the Marvel Universe, Deathlock was, uh, well, he was first published in Astonishing Tales number 25 in 1974. Deathlock was a man named Luther Manning who became a cyborg. And this was, uh, this was kind of a mixture of, uh, you think about it, it's kind of Planet of the Apes and the Six Million Dollar Man, which was huge back in the early 70s. Uh, Six Million Dollar Man is probably just coming out then. Um, of course, Six Million Dollar Man was a, a cyborg, etc. Um, the funny thing was, he was brought back to life in the future world of 1990, which 1974 was ways off. Um, the first, uh, this this first Deathlock, to me, has always been the most interesting. He, he I've, never got excited about the uh, Deathlocks that came later. I mean, they weren't in the post-apocalyptic future, so they didn't have that, that thing going for them. They were just thrown in the mix with all the other five billion superheroes without any, anything really unique about the character anymore. Um, but some of the, uh, the actual, the best, uh, best story that I remember, and this is from reading as a kid, was uh, Marvel Team Up 46 where he teamed up with Spider-Man. Spider-Man was uh, time time traveling. I, I think he got Doctor, well it wasn't Doctor Doom, Fantastic Four, Doctor Doom's time travel machine, and 
and he ended up going back to the days of the pilgrims and then he went to uh, the future with Deathlock and another apocalyptic future I'll talk about uh, later uh, Kill Raven um, and he also Deathlock also another series he popped up in was a uh, Captain America arc between uh, issues 286 to 288. That was a uh, that was a real good good series. Uh, a few comics there too. Now the Planet of the Apes, of course, was the great movie series from uh, the late 60s and 70s, and that's what brought the post-apocalyptic uh, genre uh, or made it made it popular. And um, it was uh, of course it was in comic books as well. The first uh, the first time it was. Um, brought the comics was a gold key comics adaption of the second film now honestly the second film to me isn't as good as the first film the crazy mutants worshiping the nuclear bomb thing it's always been kind of weird but uh, it was still okay I guess um, anyway the uh, the second time Planet of the Apes went from gold key comics to Marvel comics and ran between 1974 to 1977 for 29 issues or excuse me it was 29 issues of a black and white magazine and then the regular comic book series was for ele only 11 issues and that was started in 1975 but since then there's been a series from Malibu Dark Horse Comics and Boom Studios now my favorite Besides the uh, original Marvel, se Marvel series, um, was a, has been a couple of crossovers uh, from 2017. One was with uh, Green Lantern, and uh, also uh, a crossover with Star Trek. Next, Star Trek is the, the coolest one to me. Uh, it features the original Star Trek cast, and uh, I think that came out like 2014 and 2015, something, something like that really good you can get it at uh, you know online get get back uh, old copies of the story great great cool there's all kinds of really cool covers to go with it awesome now uh, as I mentioned before Kill Raven going back to him he was uh, published in Amazing Adventures uh, number 18 that was his first appearance in 1973 now uh, Marvel designates uh, his his world as an alternate earth story it features Martians, Martians from H.G. Wells' War of the Worlds, which is really cool. And uh, the Martians are what caused this apocalyptic future. Humanity is enslaved by aliens, and men are forced to fight gladiator style for the amusement of the Martians. And this is very, to me, it's an interesting follow up to H.G. Wells' original story. Um, my first introduction to Kill Raven was actually a Marvel team up number 45 in 1976. Well, I actually got the book later on. Um, but as I mentioned, it's part of that Spider Man time travel arc where he uh, goes in the future and, and the past and he runs into Deathlock, etc. Um, I remember when I first got this book, I believe it was uh, something I found at a flea market. I, uh, I remember riding my bicycle like five or 10 miles, something crazy, down the road to the flea market and picking up a whole bag of comics and then carrying them on my handlebars all the way back up and then I lived on this humongous hill. But anyway, uh, I went, I would do anything for comics back then. But uh, anyway, the, yeah, my favorite Kill Raven story has to be the uh, the Marvel team up and just as the, uh, as the death log. Just... Mixing it up with Spider-Man just, you know, I guess because Spider-Man was such a familiar character to me. And the last thing I would like to, to mention is, uh, you know, unfortunately there's never been a Thundar the, Bar the Barbarian comic series, but I think they really, somebody needs to do that. Now, if you're not familiar with Thundar, he was a, a TV series, I believe it was on ABC, lasted about a year, somewhere around 1980. Awesome awesome post-apocalyptic cartoon series and uh, you can get that on DVD I think right now I got I got the series a few years back uh, on DVD but it would be it would be awesome if they would just put that in a uh, in a comic book series anyway thanks for watching the video and um, oh and I like to mention if you are a fan of the post-apocalyptic uh, genre I am working on a uh, comic book series that uh, at least for the first book or so, it's going to feature a post-apocalyptic storyline. 
and uh, where it goes, uh, well, I haven't quite got there yet. It's in development. It's called Liberty Ace. And uh, hopefully I'll be talking to you more about that as, as we go along. Also, I've got a lot of uh, cool cartoon comic books at, at Amazon. If you just look up Tim Frady, you'll, uh, you'll see those. Um, Monkey Man Monster, Caveman Comics, Suburminals, just... A lot of fun stuff if you like, especially if you like to laugh. Though those and and then if you like time travel, which is, I love time travel. I have uh, three novels that are based on time travel that that you may enjoy. Um, uh, time cruisers, shadows of the past, and the man from nowhere. So if you get a chance, check those out. Appreciate it. They're on sale at Amazon right now. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Uh, normally I do cartoons, but I thought I'd try something a little different this time. But if you subscribe, that'd be great. And uh, check us out the next time. Thank you very much.